Thomas Pierce. I'm with the Kentucky Center for Agriculture and Rural Development, and we are a cooperative development center in Kentucky, and I'm here with Mark Wishmeyer from Blue & Company, and we're here today to talk about tax and funding issues uh, with cooperatives. And uh, first of all, Mark, if you could just introduce yourself and tell us how your work relates to cooperatives. I'm Mark Wishmeyer, Blue & Company. Uh, I've worked with Blue for 20 years. Uh, with my primary focus here the last 15 or so being in the agribusiness sector uh, with a large concentration uh, working with ag cooperatives. Gotcha. So just starting out with this discussion, uh, what are the main advantages of a cooperative from a financial perspective? Well, by being a member of the co-op, uh, you have the opportunity to get patent refunds back uh, from the business that you do with the co-op. Um, you know, there are tax benefits to the co-op itself by paying those out because, you know, they don't have to pay taxes on the portion that is being distributed back to the members to you know, avoid the double taxation that you get, um, you know, a typical corporation would have. Um, so, so the member, members have that benefit. Uh, hopefully, uh, there's also a benefit whether you're purchasing from the co-op or, or, or selling into the co-op. Um, there's benefit by having, you know, that bigger resource with you by being a part of the bigger piece. Uh, from the purchase side, you hope that the the bigger the bigger entity can buy its supplies at a cheaper rate, thus flowing down to you at a, at a better price. And if you're selling it to them, you know, the co-op hopefully has a bigger market set up than what you yourself would have. So you have more allocation of resources or more distribution channels for your product by selling as a part of a co-op, which would be beneficial. Gotcha. So on the flip side of that, what are some considerations um, uh, before forming a co-op for those, um, for the financial side of things? So what are kind of the disadvantages, as it were, of uh, forming as a co-op versus another entity? Um, well, there, there's just a lot of things to track. Part of the co-op. You're looking at it from the co-op perspective. You know they need to make sure that they're set up to maintain the membership list, keeping track of everything the member does. Um, so that can be a little tedious at times uh, from an individual standpoint. You know, do I want to be in the co-op? Do I feel I'm better? You know, individually, where I, can, you know, if I, if I'm a member, do I feel a little trapped into the co-op versus myself? Um, you know, th those would be things that are of hesitation to some people, but I think it's, I think those are all things that can be resolved um, through the help of the co-op itself, working with its members and others to make sure that the advantages are really the key points that are sold. And by working with the members, not just to get them into the co-op, but then continuing to work with them over time, um, you really, you know, get the full effect of those benefits and, and get the members locked in to be long-term members and, and users of the cooperative. Right. So in terms of uh, profits from a cooperative, who receives profits from a co-op and how are they allocated? Just kind of backing up big picture. Um, well, the members are going to receive some portion of that, whether it be through patent refunds or, um, you know, depending on your co-op, if you only have common stock, then you would just have those patent refunds that are distributed every year depending on profit levels management and board can kind of decide what what level they want to distribute out um, you do have to often have uh, preferred dividends as well a preferred stock um, so that's typically going to have some guaranteed level of, of dividend that was paid each year um, the part the part that does not go to back to the members that is retained by the co-op itself to use uh, for Future purposes, any expansion, new assets, whatever, whatever needs may be, it's it's there for uh, potential lending purposes for the bank to look at and determine how much they want to lend to the co-op and help finance. Sure. So, what are sources of equity for cooperatives, and what are some of the limitations for co-ops um, in terms of raising investment capital? So your primary sources of equity, obviously outside of the earnings that you generate yourself, 
um, you're going to market yourself to potential members, um, depending on the co-op. The you know, I've seen various levels of stock prices and become a member. Um, so you either have a low value and it's going to take a whole bunch of members, or maybe it's a little bit higher and you can get by with fewer numbers. But that's really your bigger outside piece because it's you know cooperative model that you're owned by the members, um, and and each share is worth. The same amount, no member is going to have multiple shares typically. Uh, you can do, can have other components where there are bigger shares on, on, on you know, larger things, but then you have the risk of having an individual owner by having more shares. They control and have more influence over said co op uh, doing it that way. Uh, but those are going to be your primary sources of just raising capital. Um, Hopefully through your operations, you can go through a bank, uh, some some bank to establish a line of credits or any term debt or anything you might need that way. Uh, those are really gonna be your primary sources. Gotcha. Um, how do cooperatives compare to other business structures with respect to the rate of return on investment? Well, that can vary wildly. Um, in general, I, what I would say is that um, they're capable of stacking up well and, and the general metrics that you would look at to, um, you know, analyze any corporation, you can apply those to a co-op itself. I mean, the, while it's there for the member benefit, co-op is still a business itself. And the business needs to be profitable and be successful in order to um, maintain itself throughout time. So, uh, your typical metrics of, of looking at, um, you know, gross margins, profit margins, those things, return on equity, return on assets, th those still are going to be applicable to a co-op just like they would a typical corporation. Gotcha. So what are some other considerations uh, when it comes uh, to tax, if any, uh, when it comes to operating as a co-op or forming a co-op? Um, well, you definitely want to see, you know, depending on the type of co-op are, uh, what different things, uh, can be applied for to different tax advantages there currently are with the laws, um, you know, section 199, you know, if you're, if you're a co-op that's manufacturing something or changing something, um, whether it be blending a fertilizer that you're selling to customers, if you're bringing in, uh, product and producing something else? Are you changing it in some sort of way where there's credits there? Um, <clears throat> there have been some uh, R&D or research and development credits depending on the co-op and what they're doing. Uh, so you always want to look at those advantages, typical tax advantages that any business could have and, and that it can be very beneficial to um, a cooperative because those returns um, in some cases can be rather large and that can help fund uh, different projects or expansions or things that you want to do with the co-op to where maybe you are a little more limited in funds that you can receive from a capital standpoint from members, you still have those advantages that you're doing tax-wise that can help um, replace potential shortfalls that you would have from that side of hand. So then, what, what would be some uh, some pitfalls to avoid or maybe some uh, successes that you've seen uh, for co-ops in terms of the financial side um, that you would kind of give as uh, examples of things to avoid or things to uh, pursue uh, when it comes to tax or capital equity? Well, definitely the... the one of the key things you got to look at is your gross margin that your you know gross profits you're producing yourself. Um, you, you've got to earn it locally. <laughs> Some co-ops uh, cooperatives are members of other larger, more regional cooperatives. Um, so so they would be getting pat refunds themselves. It's like you would distribute to your members. They would be getting uh, a refund as a member of another cooperative. And sometimes you know. We'll, where, where we've seen a lot of risk is the co-ops themselves locally are not producing money. They're, they're negative, but they receive a large enough hat refund every year that the bottom line looks great because 
hey, we're making money. Well, if anything should ever happen and those refunds that you've been getting dry up, then you can be in real trouble, you know, a lot of trouble really quick. Uh, so you need to focus on what you're doing locally, making sure that your local components are, you know, in, profitable and, and earning earning income. And then it's, um, you know, you want to make sure that you keep the members happy. So while you, you need to leave equity within the cooperative, <clears throat> you want to be redeeming it at a reasonable enough rate that the members are feeling they're truly getting benefit out of this instead of, well, I'm paying to be a part of this co-op and, and maybe I'm getting some benefit on the purchase or sales side, but that equity they keep telling me I have as a part of this, I'm not going to see it until, you know, I'm over 80 years old or possibly dead and gone and it's just going to my estate. So I want to make sure you want to make sure that that the members feel that they are being rewarded by being members and that that equity is coming in at a rate that is applicable or, or they feel is applicable to keep them from having to be a part of some other, you know, system, whether a different co-op or, or a different entity to do their purchasing and sales. Right. So keeping members, you know, mindful of their benefits is, is really important. Absolutely. Because yeah, the co-op, I mean, that members, co-op really doesn't have anything about it. Well, Mark, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. And uh, we hope you gain something from this video and look forward uh, to sharing more information in the future.